Hello everyone, good morning. Welcome back to Ismail Musa TV. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our lesson for today is inductive versus deductive reasoning. So, let's set our objective. At the end of this lesson, the students should be able to identify and explain the differences between types of reasoning, use inductive reasoning to form conjectures, find counterexamples, and hopefully use deductive reasoning to prove conjectures. So these are the four objectives that are expected out of you. Okay, so first, let's have a certain idea here. When we talk about inductive reasoning versus deductive reasoning, you know, no matter how unrealistic that sounds in many fields, such as science and law, proof simply doesn't exist. There can only be facts and evidence that lead you to certain conclusions. Good thing we have inductive reasoning. Someone who uses inductive reasoning makes specific observations and then draws a general conclusion. Okay? Then, how about deductive reasoning? In deductive reasoning, uh, we start from specific conclusions, then we follow a general theory. Okay? So, let's delve on. Deductive Inductive reasoning. This is the process of reaching a general conclusion by examining specific examples. Okay, so what are the steps? Present you. These are the steps in inductive reasoning. First, look for a pattern, make a conjecture, and hopefully you can prove the conjecture. If you cannot prove the conjecture, better find a counter example. Okay, let's have some example in our common math subject. The following are simple example. Okay, let's use inductive reasoning to predict what will be the next number in each of the following series or sequence. Okay, now let's have the first one. Okay, so yes, use this number. Use inductive reasoning to predict the next number in each of the following. Okay, we have 7, 11, 15, 19. But I just want to recall that we have the we have in, in pattern about arithmetic series. Okay, try to see. What's the difference? Or you add 4. To get 15, you add 4. To get 19, you add 4. You add 4. But definitely, it is expected. The next number is you also add 4. And that's 23. Now, what will be our conjecture? We say, we always add 4 to the next succeeding number. And that is when your first number is 3 plus 4, it will give you 7. When your when we have n is 2, 3 plus 4 times 2 will give you 11. 3 plus 4 times 3 will give you 15. 3 plus 4 times 4 will give you 19. And the fifth number will be 3 plus 4 times 5 will give you 23 and so on and so forth so we could conclude that whatever the number the position is you simply do 3 plus 4 times n for n that are natural numbers okay now let's have the second one 15 7 negative 1 negative 9 and so on and so forth what's the next number okay so you would notice that 15, the next number is 7, and that is by subtracting 8. Uh, when you 7 minus 8 will give you negative 1. Negative 1 minus 8 will give you negative 9. And what do you expect? Negative 9 minus 8 will give you 7, negative 17. You're right. Okay. So what is the pattern that we can come up here? Oh, let's see. Yeah. So that will be my conjecture. Okay? 23 minus 8n for all n and n an element of natural numbers. Okay. So let's try if my conjecture is correct. 23 minus 8 times 1. Yeah, and it's 15. 23 minus 8 times 2. Yes, it's 7. 23 minus 8 times 3. It's negative 1. 23 minus 8 times 4, yes, it's negative 9. And finally, 23 minus 8 times 5 is equal to negative 17. If, if you continue doing this, 
you always get the correct answer in that series. Okay? Now, how about the last, the, the, the third one? Letter C. 4, 7, 12, 19, 28. And what will be the next number? Okay. So, I have already shown you the, the pattern. Okay? Then, the conjecture is n square plus 3. No? It's simply n square plus 3. Where n is an element of natural number. Now, sometimes it would really be tiresome by doing this, no? Getting the the first number, the second number, the third number, the fourth number, and so on and so forth. Until we're exhausted. Uh, accordingly, uh, a conclusion reached based on inductive reasoning is called a conjecture. Now, of course, a conjecture may or may not be correct. No? Now, they say that the best or the fastest way to prove that the conjecture is true or not is using counterexamples. What is a counterexample? This is our statement that is true provided it is true to all cases. So if you can find a case for which a statement is not true, we call that a counterexample. Then the statement is false. Okay, for example, we say prime numbers are odd. So prime numbers are odd. So what are prime numbers? We have 1, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. And these are odd. Oh yeah, prime numbers are odd. No, of course not. You can have a counterexample. 2 is a prime, but 2 is even. Therefore, that statement, prime numbers are odd, is false. Okay? Now, let's have another one. Okay. So, we are to verify that each of the... Each of the following statements is false. No? Statement by finding counterexample. Well, we say for all x, the first one is the absolute value of x is always greater than 0. Letter B, the square of x is always greater than x. And letter C, the square root of x squared is equal to x. Hmm. So can we verify this? Again, uh, Making some induction, you, you get start from 1, 2, and so on and so forth. It's tiresome. So, again, no, let's recall, we have that a statement is true if and only if it is true in all cases. If you can find one case for each statement is not true, called culture example, then the statement is false. Okay, let's try to use this. Okay, so the solution, therefore, is... A statement may have many counterexamples, but we need only to find one counterexample to verify that the statement is false. Okay, so we have the first one. You see, huh? for all x, when we say for all x, where x is the natural number. So let x is 0. You see, x is 0. Now what's the absolute value of x if x is 0? Because 0 is not greater than 0, so 0 is a, is, is a natural number. No? So we have found that 0 is a counterexample. No? Thus, for all x, the absolute value of x is greater than 0 is a false statement. Okay, we have the second one. Okay. Yes. Okay. So when x is 1, we have 1 square is 1. Hmm. So since 1 is not greater than 1, we have found a counterexample. So we say, thus, for all x, the square of x is greater than x is a false statement. How about the third one? Okay, so our counterexample is when we consider x to be negative 3. Okay, so what is negative 3? The square root of the square of negative 3 will give you square root of 9. But plus, since 3 is not equal to negative 3, take note lah. Uh, we have found a counterexample. Because the square root of a number is always plus minus. Thus, for all x, the square root of x squared close to x is a false statement. Alright? Okay, so let's have more example of inductive reasoning and conjecture. What do you think would be the next shape? Huh? The first triangle, smaller triangle, then one, then we have four, 
four triangle is inside. One, two, three, four. Then next is we have nine triangles. Oh, the conjecture is the number of small triangles is the perfect squares. So in other words, uh, we have one triangle here, square dot, that's one. We have uh, four triangles here, that is actually two square. Then here, nine triangles, that's actually three square. What do you think will be the next number? Correct! The next number is 4 square, which will give you 16 little triangles. Okay. How about this? Can you predict the next figure in a sequence by finding the pattern? Try to describe the two patterns in the sequence of figures. Use pattern to draw the next figure. Okay. Are you ready? Try it. Okay. This is our answer. Mm, solution. The first pattern concerns the shapes. We can predict that the next shape will be a circle, right? Okay. The second pattern concerns the dots within the shapes. We can predict the dots will follow the pattern from 0 to 3 dots in, an, in a section with them rotating counterclockwise. So the figure is as below. Okay. Most often not, you can find this in intelligence tests or sometimes in uh, even in the abstract reasoning exam. Okay. Next is, we have the sum of odd number and an even number is what? We say, the sum of an odd number and even number is an odd number. Okay. Is this true? Now, we can have example. 1 plus 4 is 5. 26 plus 47 is 73. Okay. So, that's proof our uh, matter. Okay. Next, uh, Therefore, class, uh, let's have another conjecture. The sum of two numbers is always greater than the larger number. True or false? The sum of two numbers is always greater than the larger number. Okay. Can you find a counterexample to this? Diba? The best thing to prove a conjecture is finding a counterexample. Yes, class, we can find. The counterexample was found, so the conjecture is false. What if huh? negative 2 plus 0? Those are two numbers. What is their sum? Negative 2. Huh? Negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. So, class, their sum, according to what is larger between negative 2 and 0? We say 0. But therefore, uh, it's wrong because the sum negative 2 is less than 0. So that's a counter. That's, this statement is false. Okay. So let's have a summary of what is inductive reasoning. So what is a conjecture? Uh, we say a conjecture is our conclusion made based from observation. What is inductive reasoning? We say inductive reasoning uh, you conjecture based on patterns. And the way to prove conjectures true is very hard. So while proving conjecture false is much easier. Now, what is a counterexample? How do you disprove a conjecture? We say counterexample, this example that shows a conjecture is false. Now, what are the steps in inductive reasoning? How do you use inductive reasoning? Okay. So these are the steps for inductive reasoning. Fine. A pattern. Second, you make a conjecture. And finally, you test your conjecture or find a counterexample. Okay? Now, let's proceed to deductive reasoning. Okay? Hmm. Ooh. Right? So what is deductive reasoning? Deductive reasoning class is the process of... Uh, reaching a conclusion by applying general assumptions, procedures, or principles. Okay? So, uh, meaning, deductive reasoning starts with general rule, which is a premise, which we know to be true. Then from that rule, we make a true conclusion about something specific. Okay? So, let's have an example to this. Let's use deductive reasoning to show that... The following procedure produces a number that is four times the original number. Okay? So you think, you pr predict, no? 
pick a number, multiply the number by 8, add 6 to the product, divide the sum by 2, and subtract 3. Will this produce you 4 times the original number? Okay. By, deduct by deductive reasoning, yes. Okay. So let n represent the original number. What is n? The original number. Multiply that by n, you get 8n. Huh? So, multiplication. Product, huh? Then, you add to the product 8n plus 6. Divide the sum by 2, you get 8n divided by plus 6, divided by 2 will give you 4n plus 3. You subtract 3, then you get 4n. So, we started with n, ended with n. So, the, num the procedure is given in this example produces a number that is 4 times the original number. Okay? Now, but what's the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning? Okay, let me give you the difference. Okay? Now, inductive reasoning uses pattern to arrive at a conclusion, or we call it the conjecture. While deductive reasoning uses facts, rules, definitions, or properties to arrive at a conclusion. Okay? So, think of it, class. Inductive reasoning, think of it like a we start with specifics and move to the generalities. It is the process of reaching a general conclusion by examining the specific examples. So, as if you are on the top of the triangle going down. Well, deductive reasoning, class, think of it like we start with generalities and move to specific. Okay? It is the process of reaching a conclusion by applying general assumptions or procedures or principles. So imagine you have a triangle, inverted triangle, and you move to the specific. Okay. Let's have the following. Uh, let, let us tell whether it's inductive or deductive. Okay. Uh, in geometry, for example, what is the measure of angle X? What is the measure of angle X? So what will we use? Inductive or deductive? Oh, the correct answer is, of course, deductive. Huh? Why? We can have an assumption that triangle sum property, the sum of the angles of any triangle is always 180 degrees. Therefore, angle X is 30. So that is Deductive reasoning, eh? a conclusion based on a property. Okay? How about here? What is the next shape in the sequence? It's up to you. You solve for it. Okay. Now, how about this? 90% of humans are right handed. Yeah. Joe is human. Therefore, Joe is right handed. Hmm. Inductive, deductive. Of course, it's deductive. Okay, next. You are a good student. You get all A's. Therefore, your friends must get all A's too. You are a good student. You get all A's. Therefore, your friends must get all A's too. That's inductive. Very good. How about this? All oranges are fruits. All fruits grow on trees. Therefore, all oranges grow on trees. Inductive or deductive? Precisely, it's deductive. Okay. Now, are you ready for the quiz? Okay, get one half sheet of paper and answer this quiz. Submit your answer to our Google Classroom. Goodbye, class. See you in the Google Classroom. Bye-bye. By the way, please subscribe. Wait,